Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on Live Music Nation Podcast, Festival and Fair Edition. Today, we're with Michelle, and she is with Uncorked Wine Festivals. Michelle, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Michelle, give us a little background on you. Where did you grow up? And then let's talk about your career up until now and with your with your festivals. Sure. Well, I grew up in Florida, um, moved out to California after college, started this company in 2015, and really just sort of wanted to create something that was a really fun mass market event bringing wine to people that may have a huge interest in wine, may have some of an interest in wine, but really just like fun things to do. Um, and that way it's something that everyone can do together without feeling intimidated, without feeling stuffy. And it's just more of an experience than it is anything else. So what was it for you first? Was it the wine or was it the event planning side? Well, that's an interesting question. I would say, I mean, I've always been a, a wine lover um, and it just sort of, you know, craft beer festivals are a huge industry, um, but there's mm -hmm. nothing like that in the wine market. So that was sort of where it was born from. Okay. What were you doing before this? What were you doing career-wise before this? I actually had my own fitness company. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So you kind of already had that that entrepreneurial spirit going and then found a way to find two of your passions and combine them into one. Exactly. Okay, great. <clears throat> Tell us about your festivals. Where do they occur and, and what do they look like when people attend? Sure. So I do about 19 different festivals a year across the country. Um, some of our really fun Midwest events are Cleveland, Columbus, Kansas City, St. Louis, um, and it really depends on the venue. That's sort of where I start, and that's where the ven that's where the event comes to life from there. So in Cleveland, for example, we do the Great Lakes Science Center. It's okay. a night event, so it's an after hours full access to the museum, all the exhibits, plus forty to fifty different wineries. Um, each winery brings about three or four different wines. So there's a lot to choose from, regardless of what someone's taste or palate is. We've got still sparkling, red, white, pink, sometimes blue. <laughs> it just depends. So we bring together the, the science, the atmosphere, and the wine. We have a DJ there so people can sit and listen to music and enjoy their wine or walk through the exhibits. And it's just a little a little bit of everything for people to enjoy a fun night out. We also, this year, we're going to be able to bring food trucks to that one as well. Previously, the on-site caterer had food exclusivity. Um, Kansas City, for example, we do that one at Union Station. That one's always a really, really fun event. Um, that one is a two-session event, so people have the option of an afternoon session or the evening session. Afternoon session tends to be a little bit more casual. Evening session, people tend to dress up a little bit more, go a little fancy. But it's the same wineries at both. Again, food trucks, a DJ. We have a lot of amazing local craft vendors as well. They're doing like um, custom painted wine glasses and wine themed accessories. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a little bit of something for everyone. So do you do indoor and outdoor events? We do, yeah. Predominantly in the Midwest, we're looking at indoor events just because, you know, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it'll change. Wow. Um, but in Southern California, we do some outdoor events. Um, in Florida, I do an event that's both indoors and outdoors, but the, the larger space is an outdoor space. So it really just depends on the weather. What is this? For you, logistic-wise, are you on site at all 19 of these festivals? Do you have staff? How's that working for you? I am on site at all of them. Uh, I do hire event staff for the day. I have one um, sort of assistant that I tend to bring with me to all the events. Um, but most of the staff that we hire for the event is local staffing companies. Um it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of insanity until the event starts and then it <laughs> goes down for a bit. <laughs> and then it's a little bit more insanity at the end of the night, trying to get everything broken down and cleaned out. 19 events through the year, you pretty much um, have devised a system that works that you can implement. And there, I know there's variable factors in any location that you go to. Um, where did you get that model from? Uh, trial and error, <laughs> to yeah. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's a lot of it. Um, and it's different at every venue. You know, anytime I go into an event to a venue for the first time, um, I always like to do walkthroughs the day before I have to do wine deliveries. The distributors bring the wine on Friday. So I try to really map out the flow of if someone walks in, where are they walking to? Where are they going to be bottlenecking? Where are they going to be, um, you know, finding the open spaces? What's the guest experience going to be like? And, you know, you you tweak a few things every time, but it's sort of specific to the venue and that changes with each event. What, what for you is the reward in this? Um, like, like what, what is that, that, that moment or that experience that says, man, all of this work is worth it. This is what I was born and put on this earth to do. <laughs> you know what? I'm a big believer in experiences in life over things. Um, I love to gift experiences. I like to, um, have my kids focus on experiences over you know, possessions, because those are the things that you remember. Those are the things that shape your memories and your nostalgia. So to have people say, this is a really fun time. I really, you know, I've been to this event every year and I always have a fun time. To me, that makes it worth it to know you're giving someone an experience where they can just forget anything and everything else yep. for a couple of hours, come enjoy some great wines, enjoy time with their spouse or their family or their friends or whomever they're with, or maybe make some new friends. Lord knows after a couple sips of wine, people are making new friends. Right. right. Um, <laughs> So that's what makes it worth it to me is knowing that you're creating something that people are going to enjoy. I think that you kind of just summed it up in, in any live event, in any form of, of gathering or entertainment, it is the experience. It's why people still go to concerts instead of listening to CDs or music and downloads on home. It's why people still go to the movie theater versus watching Netflix it's that experience that people feel. Um, how is growth for you post COVID? I'm sure the first year was just tremendous getting back out there. Um, are are yeah. growth patterns still going up for you guys? You know, what's crazy is I, it was such a big question mark after the shutdowns. And I tried to do some virtual events during the shutdowns. I, I mean, I did do some virtual events. It's just not the same. Cause again, it's about that experience. Um, but the first the first event back after was in June um, 2021 in Cleveland, and it was like people could not get out of the house fast enough. So I feel like that that first six months was just insanity. Um, this past year has been really steady. Next year, we're already adding three new cities. Mm. So it's going well. Um, it's steadied out a, li a little bit more, but I prefer that over, you know, hot flashes and burning out. Yeah, no, for sure. Very good. Very good. Okay. So a couple of fun questions here because, because I'm a, I'm a live music, I'm an entertainment guy. Um, with or without wine, what's the best concert you've ever seen in your life? Ooh, um, well, I, it's a toss up because I have to say first concert again, feeling some kind of way, memories, experiences. My very first concert was the Billy Joel Elton John piano man tour. And I'm dating myself, but that was pretty epic Okay, um, to see them go dueling piano style, play piano man together. Um, but beyond that, um, I would have to say I saw Jason Mraz in a really, really small event space in California, and it was a really beautiful, intimate, and I've been a fan of his since he was too young to be going into bars and playing them. Um, so that was a really beautiful experience. Okay, very good. Last question would be, if you could bring any one artist, dead or alive, to all 19 of your events, and they toured with you, who would you bring? I would bring Ed Sheeran. Oh, yeah. No, that's perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hands down. I just feel like he'd be a fun dude to have a sip of wine with and like just be be a yeah. smart ass and have yeah, fun. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Michelle, how do people find out more about your events? They can go to uncorkedwinefestivals.com. Uh, they can find us on Instagram or Facebook, but our website goes directly to those sites perfect. as well. All right. Michelle, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jake. Well, baby, I'm on with a bottle.